on Eye of the Tiger have been spotlighting excerpts from the National Black Theatre Festival. I have with me Professor Clarence Ball, who traveled with us to the festival this year. Professor Ball, welcome. <laughs> welcome, how are you? How'd you like, I'm good. How'd you like the festival? Well, I had an awesome time. I had an opportunity to see some really great theater. And I also had an opportunity to see some people that had a special place in my heart. I grew up watching the TV series Soul Food. Mm. And the character that played Maxine was named Vanessa Williams. And I had an opportunity to sit down with Vanessa Williams at the festival and actually talk to her about some of her acting creds and things like that. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a look. Clarence Ball here again with Tennessee State University's Eye of the Tiger. And we're here at the National Black Theater Festival with none other than Vanessa Williams with TV's The Soul Food. So can you please tell us what your experience has been like this week? Oh my goodness, I'm so excited and exuberant and uh, just inspired. I just uh, was a part of a, a reading for a new play called yes. The Contract by award-winning uh, playwright James Webb. Uh, and his work is phenomenal, but I'm here at the festival with my own play, my own one-woman show mm -hmm. called Feet on the Ceiling, and um, this, tonight is my last performance. I've had four, well, I'll have four in total, and it's just been an amazing time, and it's too much great theater to see, to see it all, yes. and um, it's just, I'm so um, grateful for the opportunity to put my work out and my story out. Thank yes. you guys for coming to see. I came to the show in Limited Tennessee State. It was so <laughs> phenomenal. Seriously, we had an opportunity to watch a woman grow into her own. What was that experience like writing that story? Well, writing it, you know, it came uh, through a, a, a series of classes and workshops. And so when I started this journey of writing these stories, I had no idea that it would birth into um, a play. And even out of that also came a movie, my short film, oh, wow. Dent, which has been doing the theater circuit and aired on Showtime um, a few years ago when, uh, when I first put it. So these, uh, I took a writing class with a wonderful writing teacher in Los Angeles, Jack Grapes, mm -hmm. and he, uh, he, he has a writing class um, where it's called Writing from the Deep Voice. Okay. And it's about speaking the truth and having the fearlessness and the courage to right. uh, speak what you've known and speak like and write like you talk right. so that it's not all obtuse and and you get to the nitty gritty of right. it and you describe each image moment. And um, that's a wonderful thing in storytelling because you get to put the reader, the watcher, the, the whoever's been told, your audience, yes. right in the place because they see every tree, every pencil, everything that's going on in the scene. Exactly. And it really served as I sought to produce my one woman show. Um, and this, again, came together. I'm the kind of writer who works on a deadline. I'm not <laughs> yes. as disciplined as I'd love to be. Mm -hmm. And um, it came together with the need, the necessity creating the demand. And right. so I had to fulfill the demand. Right. Uh, to go from the community theater to two plays on Broadway, yes. to like fulfilling my Broadway dreams, and then going to Los Angeles, being in town about six months, and then being like thrust into the red carpet, yes. being fired from that gig, hello, Hollywood, <laughs> and then trying to like maintain your composure, your sanity, and know that whether you're working or not is no uh, judgment on how good you are. Right. To sort of find some tool to maintain your sanity so that you can deal with the high highs and the low lows. Yes. Yes. And as everyone has felt like the recession and the different kind of structural change that happened while I was in the safety and cocoon of being on a series mm -hmm. and just under my feet, uh, the whole industry changed, mm -hmm. the technology and everything wow. and what kinds of shows are being bought now. So things are much more scarce and much more higher profile people are up for the same jobs that would have gone to like different tiered actors. Right. It's a whole right. new game. Right. And so to stay alive in that, you create your own vehicles. Mm -hmm. You get together and do business with like-minded people mm -hmm. and you just don't take no for an answer. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's been my survival. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so with the journey, right? What one character can you say that you've played that has been monumental in, in your life? How has it changed you, one specific character? Well, there's been a series of characters. It's okay. not just one, you okay. know. Um, of course, um, it was pretty, as I said, a dream come true. I've lived a life of my dreams coming true, so that is pretty brilliant. I talk about that in my show. I sat and dream, dream dreams, and, they, and I got to tick everything off. Cosby Show, got that. Broadway, got that. Yes. Film, got that. Um, and of course, you know, nothing was more wonderful than those four years on Soul Food, yes. getting to really rest in a character, show yes. up at the, at the uh, on the set every day, 
and get to fulfill this this day in day out kind of exploration with an with a fabulous cast of talented actors and really have a home in a way of honing your craft in a way that just makes you ready in 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 a way that practice makes perfect right, right. so i'd say those those things um those those and those characters and those experiences have been the most monumental Okay, going back briefly to uh, to feet on the ceiling because I know you yeah. I know you got to run right, and thank you so much for your time, right? Sure. But briefly to, to feet on the ceiling, what it was um, for me and a lot of people sitting around me, right, was really you coming into your own your own sexual identity, yes, right? Yes. And sometimes it's kind of hard for actors to to walk that walk with an audience because it's kind of personal. Why did you make the decision to do that? Well, as actors, our job is to be naked, to tell the naked truth, to unabashedly. Um, give the uh, as artists, we give the rest of the population permission to live their fullest, most truthful life, and that's a really hard walk. Yes. And I wanted to share, as I do in the in the show, that it has been challenging. That life of me ain't been no crystal stair, right. but I enjoy the ride and the um, and the uh, challenge or. The, the challenge that it is to to try to live that way. I by no means have the answer. Right. I I know what answers I have now. I know what things work for me. My burgeoning womanhood. I mean, feet on the ceiling is basically a coming of age story. It's about value. Yeah. It's about how you know you're a woman. It's about how you know you're valued. And as a little brown girl in in America, right. that has been a really slippery slope. And how I and what I speak to is how I've come to terms with it from all the influences and the messages that say or that I took to mean that I'm not enough how to really stand and say I am enough mm -hmm. finally and of course I have to relearn that lesson yes. some from time to time you know but as I get older and wiser it becomes less of a of a leap to sort of believe oh it's like more like I have to oh yeah check in remember yeah you're valuable you're valuable no matter what's going right. on what's right. happening right. and that's right. that's a lesson for all of us right. as, as we grow and, and develop okay so you talked about being a little brown girl, right? Yeah. What do you say to little brown girls who want to be just like you when they grow up? <laughs> well, I say they want to be just, I say be just like yourself. Mm -hmm. Be true to yourself. Be courageous enough to do the, do the challenging thing. You know, do something that scares you. Right. Um, wow. And I don't mean be um, wow. neglectful. I don't mean um, I don't mean necessarily jump off the roof, but sometimes when you're being true to yourself, it feels like that. Right. Um, the cushion that that I feel like I had was the real sort of not kidding myself. Well, first of all, it was a walk with God. Okay. You know, lots of people talk about that, and it's a personal journey. And we and in the play, The Contract, which is about God and yes. homosexuality, it yes. really, really gets dealt with in a way that I think is very healthy for our community, the black community, and the America at large. Yes. So these are questions that we need to ask of ourselves. But I definitely believe in a higher power, in God, if you will, and that that, that is a sustaining force. And that as we work through creativity, that this is what we're doing. We're co-creating with the divine power within us to create something that never existed before. And so as we make this journey, it's a holistic kind of journey. You develop yourself as a human being, that you know that the power is within you, that you don't have to look for recognition recognition and, and approval that all that will come once you satisfy this this that's within you and um, and so it's that search so yes it's 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 often being outside of your comfort zone outside of your family structure re-establishing some long-held beliefs right. I believe in therapy and the Bible <laughs> and and looking and questioning the Bible Yes. So all of that is part of the journey. And so I think there's no one answer, but you but but you have the answer within you. That's for sure. You can trust yourself. Okay. But you got to be sure you're listening to the right self. I'm telling you, it's a lot you know, of selves. There's a lot of selves in there. There's a lot of selves in there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, is there anything that I did not ask you that you want to add, right? Any any message, a mantra of yours, anything? No, I mean, I, I think we sort of covered it in all of this. You know, I love my people. I want to come see y'all. I want to bring my play, my <laughs> movie. We talked about that. Yes, yes. So we talked yeah, about we talked that. About so that. I'm ex excited about those possibilities and right. how we make that happen. Definitely. Um, and, and I want to get your book too. You're yes, selling a book. Yes, and yes, we'll be yes. Looking it's for called your Right. We need I know to do you. That. Yeah. She, 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 she. We. Ha I have them now here in the hotel. Okay. And um, oh, actually, no. I think they're still at the theater. But um, okay. but uh, all that to say that. All that to say that, um, yes, uh, I want to say how much I love artists, how much I love people, how much I believe in you. 
and I know that everything is possible if you believe and just never say never. Well, Tennessee State University, I couldn't have said it better. We're here now with Vanessa Williams and um, I'm empowered. So I hope that you got a similar message. Thank you so much and tune in to Eye of the Tiger.